I've been researching a new video on my maternal grandfather, who was a pioneer Texas oil man. He leased the land for the first oil well in the Texas Panhandle from Captain S.B. Burnett. Gulf Oil Company's Burnett No. 2 came in on March the 17th, 1921. Watch for the video very soon. Making several research trips to the Panhandle, I saw many oil pumping units, or pump jacks, in scrap yards. I've been fascinated with these machines since I was a kid, and following an old Texas saying, if you don't have an oil well, get one, I decided to make it happen. A fellow in Petrolia, northeast of Wichita Falls, had a bunch of old units in his yard. He's a third generation pumper, and we hit it off comparing our family's oil field history. The wells around Petrolia, Discovery Well was in 1908, are very shallow, about 250 feet. The size of the pumping unit is determined by the depth of the well. These are pretty small rigs as compared to most others. Many wells in Texas are in excess of 3,000 feet deep. Some wells around Petrolia are still pumping a few barrels a day. Trey Massey runs a few leases and takes care of the wells in the area. He had this little national unit and made me a very reasonable deal. It was pretty worn, but he offered to throw in a bunch of spare parts and the wellhead components I needed to make a fully functional piece of animated yard art. I drove back a week later with a U-Haul trailer. Trey's Roughnecks loaded the unit, and I headed back to our Crawford Ranch. It probably weighs less than a thousand pounds, and the skids made it easy to pull off the trailer with my tractor and a chain. This sketch will help illustrate the essential parts of an oil well pumping unit. I'll use the terms walking beam, horse head, pitman arm and crank, counterweight, saddle bearing, Samson post, gear reducer, prime mover, bridle, polished rod, stuffing box, pumping tee, casing head, sucker rod, and tubing. For this discussion, we'll not be talking about the downhole components, such as the pump itself. After getting it unloaded, I carefully went over the unit and discovered the bearings were completely shot and would have to be repaired or remanufactured. The gearbox was, however, in perfect shape and a unit could be easily turned by hand. The pitman arm bearing was totally worn out and the maiden saddle bearing was even worse. After lifting the walking beam off the Samson post, I discovered the damage was much greater than I thought. Fortunately, the shafts were okay and could be used after a thorough cleanup. The shafts themselves are held rigid and do not turn. The bearing blocks do the turning. I drew some plans showing how I could use off-the-shelf centered bronze press fit bearings. Remember, this is yard art and will not be pulling 250 feet of sucker rod out of the ground. Old buddy Wayne Kuby pressed the worn out brass out of the Pittman bearing block. I'd never used a shop press, so my next stop was Horrible Freight to buy one for my shop. I machined a pair of steel inserts to fit in each end of the casting and pressed the new bearings with my new press. The inserts are held in place with two set screws on each end. The saddle bearing was a much bigger project. The cast iron bearing block was totally ruined as you can see. I found a piece of three quarter inch mild steel, milled it to size, and milled out the slots. I added a wide slot across the flats to hold the new bearing block. The block was four and a half inches long by two and a half inch in diameter. A long three quarter inch boring bar was used on the Rockwell lathe with a steady rest. Old pal Jimmy Don Holmes TIG welded the parts together before I pressed in the bearings.
The unit required a lot of cleanup. I estimate the rig was probably installed in 1957, so almost 70 years of service it had accumulated a lot of rust, crude oil residue, Texas dirt, and excess lubrication. I used parts cleaning solvent available from Tractor Supply, a siphon spray gun with my air compressor, a number two wash tub, wire brushes, and lots of Scotch-Brite pads. The clean parts were then primed and painted. The old paint on the porcelain national signs was easily removed with lacquer thinner. I also removed the paint from the brass gearbox and structure plates and polished them with Brasso. Now working on something like this obviously requires more than a quarter inch socket set. I located new half inch U-bolts and replaced all the old ones. After reinstalling the new bearings, I gave it a hand powered test. Everything worked fine except one of the pitman arm cranks from the gearbox was very sloppy. I took the crank apart and found that the set screw had come out and the crank had worn out the bearing seal. Believe it or not, my local auto parts store had one in stock for $3. That and a new set screw were all that were needed. I repacked the bearings, both sides, and all was well indeed. The walking beam is designed to be balanced under load. This means that the total weight of the sucker rod string and the downhole pump is balanced by the weight of the counterweights and the position of the fulcrum, which is the saddle bearing, location on the beam. So the very heavy counterweights would not work with what I calculated to be 50 pounds, horse head and polished rod. I made new decorative ones out of 2x12 pressure treated lumber. Putting some dumbbells from my neighbor's weight room on the horse head balanced things out pretty well. After repainting the entire unit with Rust-Oleum, I bought a new TEFC 1.5 horsepower motor and made new T-nuts for the motor mount. The gearbox is a 26 to 1 reduction. For every 26 turns of the 12 inch drive pulley, the pump makes one complete cycle. Using a 1700 RPM, it required an inch and a half diameter motor pulley. Under power, the pump turns about 9 RPM, which is a little fast, but it'll do. It draws less than 5 amps. The current meter shows the unit is pretty well balanced. The most useless tool I own down here in this rocky country is a shovel. Neighbor Clayton Yost drilled a hole for the four and a half inch well casing with a skid steer and a hydraulic rock drill. We set the casing in concrete and after it cured, I installed the polish rod and well head components. While the electric motor worked just fine, I wanted to run it with one of my hit and miss engines. To do this, I made a jack shaft using a 12 inch diameter crowned pulley and an eight inch spoke pulley, some chinesium pillow blocks and a piece of three quarter inch shaft did the trick. I had to machine a hub for the crown pulley out of a five and a half inch diameter piece of aluminum round. Now I had plenty of help here during our annual guys weekend at the ranch. 
The electric motor was easily removed from the mount and we installed the jack shaft in its place. A longer V-belt was required. I purchased a four inch wide flat belt with clips from Flywheel Supply. We rolled the two horsepower United engine into place and fired her up. The only issue we encountered was aligning the engine with the drive pulley on the rocky ground. We also changed out the V-drive pulley to a larger diameter to speed up the pump. It's been running now for several weeks and not one drop of oil has come up. I was misinformed. Thanks very much for watching. Thank you.